Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, and I pray and I hope that you have a beautiful and a safe weekend. I doubly pray that when your eyes open this morning, the first thing that rolled off of your lips was thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to get it right, just in case I missed something on yesterday. You've given me another opportunity. And I do thank you for that. I ask you before you start your busy morning, you may be getting up and getting dressed to prepare breakfast for that handsome, gorgeous husband, for your children. Or you just may be getting up preparing breakfast for yourself. You may be getting ready to go to work, drop the children off to school, go to the grocery store, go to the beauty shop if they are open go to the mall, and just take care of the business of the day. Whatever your endeavor is this morning, I ask you before you start your busy morning to open your ears and radiate your mind and let it flow on down to your heart and let your heart pump the word of the morning. And the word of the morning is vow, vow. You know, we all have made a vow in our life. Some of you have not made them yet, but eventually you will. The most important two vows that you can make is to say that you're going to follow the Lord Jesus. And the second two is that I take, I vow that I will respect and honor cherish my wife or my husband. Those are some very serious vows. We should not take them lightly, but we do. Let's look at the definition of vows. A solemn promise to make an earnest pledge one by which a person is bound to that act serve or condition to bind or consecrate by a vow just a serious promise you know nowadays we just we say things and we come up with all kind of excuses why we didn't do, why we forgot, or why we <laughs> missed doing it. Let's look at what the Bible meaning for vows. A solemn promise made to God to perform or to abstain from performing a certain act a decision so it's the same thing it's a solemn promise and something solid means you're going to see it through no matter what you're going to see it through no matter what and the best example that we should be following is the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he came and he made a promise that he would go to the cross of Calvary and redeem mankind from their sins. And he did not let nothing or no one detour him from the vow that he made. That's how serious promises are and vows are. Let's look at what Ecclesiastes 5, 4, 5, and 6 says. When you vow a vow unto God, referencing not to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools, pay that which you have vowed. In other words, 
uncertain under no uncertain terms this script is saying the holy spirit has told us to be very careful about making a vow however if one is made we are to keep it we are to keep that promise let's look at what five says Ecclesians 5 and 5 says, Better is it that you should not vow. That means you shouldn't make a promise to do anything for anybody if you're planning on not seeing it through. You're not supposed to make a promise that you can't carry through. And it says, Better is it that you should not vow than that you shall vow and not pay. If a person makes a vow, he should do all within his power and ability to keep that vow. However, if a person makes a random vow and it turns out that it is impossible to keep it, one should plead with the Lord to forgive such one should plead with the Lord to forgive such a random vow and then lay that vow aside. So if you made a promise to somebody and you didn't carry it through, you need to go to God and ask God to forgive you. Because you know promises made that are not kept is just as sinful as the rest of the sins in our life. So it behooves us to not walk around and make promises. You know, I used to hear the old people say when somebody said, well, will you? And the thing they would say, if the Lord God says the same, I will do this or I will do that. And you cover yourself. Suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. When you make promises and you don't and you make vows, and you don't see them through, what did I just say? It's sinful. Neither say you before the angels that it was an error. Wherefore, shall God be angry at your voice and destroy the works of your hand? When we make vows and don't see them through, that what we don't do represent who we are on the inside. That's why a vow is very detrimental to make and don't go through with it. The mouth too often causes the flesh to sin. This verse shall make us understand how serious that God takes vows. Stop making a vow that you know you're going to get in the middle of the road and don't go through with it. Think about what Jesus could have done. He could have bagged out, but he understood the seriousness of making vows. My sisters and brothers, let us get serious this morning about our lives. So this morning, have you made a vow? That you did not see it through? Have you asked the Lord Jesus Christ to help you to get past that sin that you made and didn't see it through? And ask him to help you to make the right kind of vow and give you the strength to see it through to the end. Remember the old people of old. And we want to throw the old folks to the side. But they had something key and that we need to find those keys and hold on to. They used to say, if somebody asked them to do something, or they, somebody wanted them to give them something, if the Lord Jesus says the same, I will do this or I will do that. And you don't bring condemnation on your own soul.
when you say that. So let us remember the last portion of the verse. Wherefore, wherefore shall God Almighty be angry at your voice and destroy the works of your hand? So please, the next time you make a vow, the best word to use, if the Lord Jesus Christ says the same, I will do this or I will do that. And if the Lord Jesus says the same, I will see you on Tuesday. Be safe, be blessed, and the next time, think before you speak a vow. Bye-bye.